Gracious God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, our minds, our very spirits, may all of these be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, as a child, there is nothing better, at least it seemed to me, nothing more joyful, nothing as exciting and compelling as those last few days of school waiting for summer, the very thought of summer, its freedom, its seemingly endless amount of time and promise to explore, to let the soul sing. It glowed before me like a giant king tide supermoon rising up over the horizon, magnificent and awesome. But as we age, as we become adults, some of that anticipatory glow, the awesomeness of summer, begins to fade. Today, I hope to reignite at least a little bit of the awesomeness of summer with a proposal. Here's what I'd like us all to do. As adults, I think we should have a summer break. I think we ought to introduce that. <laughs> into our lives, into this church. Now, I realize that we're not going to be able to take quite as long as a school break. Not a couple of months. But can't we at least take a break for a week? Maybe even two a day or two? Several hours in the midst of a day, something? If we could do that, if we could just set our schedules aside, our responsibilities aside, if we could put down that to-do list in our pocket or purse and all the mental have-tos that keep in our head and follow us around like a little miniature scolding drill sergeant. If we could set these aside just long enough so that the summer, like Sabbath, could dip its toe into our life for a moment, for a moment. If that were to happen, what would you do with your Sabbath, your summer break? Just imagine, would you curl up with a good book? Would you take a long walk on the beach? Would you finally start that exercise routine that seems such a good idea on New Year's Eve? Would you learn to sail, to write a poem, take a trip, learn to play an instrument? What would you do? As you can see, the possibilities, they are endless, just as they are for a child on the very first day of summer. Whatever that is for you, take a moment. Close your eyes. Imagine yourself schedule-less. Responsibility-less. Free. Free. What would you do? How does that feel? How does it change you? Your soul, your spirit, your attitude, your body. And now I hate to say it, but come back right here in this moment. Now if you actually did what you just imagined, rather than just Imagining that, it would have profound effects. For when we are at peace, our spirit, our soul, our mind, when joy fills our hearts, when we learn, when we play, when we laugh, 
The kindness and mercy and patience that so often in the busyness of our days scatters like cats comes home and takes back residence in our hearts. In these moments of peace, of joy, of gladness, a spirit of generosity begins to envelop everything we do, everything we say. And as it does, the spirit begins to take hold of our lives. These acts, these words that spill out from us, they're like a baptism into blessing for those that are around us. Our joy and compassion offer them hope when they feel no joy, when they experience only hardness in their lives. But alas, even for kids, summer ends. They have to go back. They have to go back to school, back to alarm clocks and homework. But for them, as it is for us, if we have had the courage, yes, the courage, to carve a little summer-like Sabbath into our days, into our lives. The peace, the joy that we experienced in those moments linger with us still. We're able to, excuse me, to able to carry them back with us into our lives, into the fall, into the winter moments of our lives, moments of challenge, moments of adversity. The trick, of course, is to take enough soul-restorative Patience and compassion expanding, summer like Sabbath, and to take them consistently enough. So the Sabbath one spirit never leaves us, but becomes for us like an endless summer. An endless spirit of Sabbath, a feeling connected and close to God, steeped even in God's spirit of joy and abundance and grace so steeped that it begins to change everything we do. But sadly, most often, too often, we don't do that. We don't take Sabbath. Unlike children who simply just can't wait for summer break, who would do anything in order to make it happen as adults, we actually fear Sabbath. We fear taking a break, letting go of schedules and responsibilities. We fear moments of rest. For Sabbath, for play, for exploration, it feels as if it would be a Herculean task, a risky and dangerous task. What would our boss say? And if you're the boss, what would your employees say? If we took a break from answering emails or the phone, will they think us selfish, lazy, irresponsible? Sadly, they may. Which is why employees in 2017 left 707 million Vacation days unused. 700 million vacation days that you are free to take, that you are paid to take. But we as Americans did not. The good news is we are free, actually, to take a summer break, to take Sabbath. But it is a freedom left unused. It is a risk we feel we cannot take or we are unwilling to take. Which is why I have brought this whole subject up today. Because today, of course, is Memorial Day. A day when we realize, or we should, that the political and economic freedom that we enjoy has not come free. It has come by sacrifice. 
by way of those willing to pay an enormous cost to make the ultimate sacrifice so that others, so that we, can enjoy that too often unused freedom and blessing. In the same way, the freedom that we have to connect with God also, by the way, came by way of sacrifice. The sacrifice of Jesus. And it will come into our lives if we have a willingness also to sacrifice. But are we willing? Sabbath in our day is an act of courage. It's an act of faith. What do we have to let go of? What judgments do we need to give up? What do we have to risk in order for us to be willing to take Sabbath? Whatever that may be for you, I hope that this weekend we may remember that those sacrifices are the very way to keep our spiritual lives healthy. The sacrifices made are what keep a spirit of mercy and joy and love and compassion alive in us. And being alive in us keeps them alive in this world. So this weekend, may we remember and give thanks for all of those that have come before us that have had the courage to make sacrifices and take risks to be a blessing for others so that we can experience blessing. And then may we have the courage and the faith to make their example our own so that we may enjoy the freedom of God's Spirit this summer. Amen.